Hi, this is Anil Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Guljit Nagpal, Chief Product Officer of XLQ. Guljit, first of all, a welcome to the show. So tell me the story of the company, when and why you created the company, what problem you saw in the market that you wanted to solve. I've been associated in this field for uh, almost uh, two decades now in the testing and test automation. Uh, for a lot of folks, you know, Mercury would ring a bell. At one point, we held uh, the largest market share and we got acquired by Hewlett Packard. And, you know, in, in those years, uh, we, you know, me and, and uh, you know, our, 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 our founder and CEO, Mahendra, you know, uh, we all saw kind of the pain, uh, you know, uh, that that testing and specifically automation, uh, you know, ground up, we were able to experience both sides of the table, so to say, right, providing a platform which kind of captured the market. But we could also see how technology and application landscape was changing, right, with applications getting more dynamic, the release velocity significantly increasing, the world kind of going towards digital transformation and traditional automation approaches, um, you know, were bottlenecked and, and were challenged by kind of, you know, a, a plethora of reasons, right? I mean, from, from programming complexities to framework overheads, they were just not able to catch up to the changing world, uh, so to say, right, of development methodolo methodologies, technology stacks, and so on. And, and there was uh, there was a clear uh, path in terms of, uh, you know, a solution, right? But, uh, you know, as, as, as it happens so often, right, uh, you know, uh, a lot of vendors and, and approaches kind of tend to hang on to those, uh, you know, the, the, the traditional and conservative approaches, right? So, you know, there was a need uh, which was clear to, to us at least, right, to, to kind of reinvent uh, this whole uh, field, right? And, and that's basically what, what, the, the, what spun the speed uh, seed for AxelQ, right? It's, it's a, more, uh, a much more modern approach to testing, to automation, to bring a more life cycle approach to this siloed, uh, uh, you know, process area, right? And, and basically at the end of the day, bring significantly efficiency to the whole development as well as maintenance of, of what test automation really needs to cope up with today's continuous delivery pipelines. And that's kind of, you know, where the whole story began. And, and now uh, we've been pretty fortunate to kind of, you know, lead the market. I mean, the last month, the latest Forrester report that came out put us right in the leader quadrant. And, you know, as per these independent analysts, it's, it's pretty much never happened that a, a company like a young a company like ours, um, you know, uh, came, 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 became part of this, uh, this research and sh pretty much shot straight up to, to the leader. So, yeah, we've been, we've been enjoying the journey and what makes it more exciting is kind of, you know, what, what we have in store for future. The trend that we see in the cloud native space, the cloud space, uh, number one, I want to understand from you, what role does testing, continuous testing play in a CI CD pipeline and where does it fit into the pipeline itself? At the same time, how do you really enable developers or DevOps engineers so that it just becomes part of their workflow very easily. I will also talk, talk about tools at some point, but I just want to understand uh, the, the, the whole workflow of how does the pipeline look like when it comes to testing. In continuous testing, you know, is, 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 is as, as you rightly said, it's, it's a core part of the CI CD workflow, right? Without that, at the end of the day, if you're achieving a release velocity, uh, which is basically speed in our uh, in our overall pipeline. It, it the speed can only come from all the different process areas that make up that pipeline, right? It's not just the development methodology, or it's not just the uh, release automation, or the orchestration of it, or it's not just the testing. It's really all different aspects and 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 how well they coordinate and hand off with each other, because that's kind of where a significant leak, so to say, in efficiency happens, right? And and so many times we've seen when multiple tools come together, you know, how that handoffs gets inefficient and so on, right? So, um, you know, interestingly, testing has always been looked at, even if we look at kind of, you know, the dark ages, it's always been looked at as an overhead of just to catch bugs. And, and unfortunately, that's how this process area evolved, right? And it is kind of plagued with more being reactive and an overhead as opposed to something that's baked into as part of your product development, right? And like you rightly mentioned, right? Baked into the part where 
you're developing a high quality product as opposed to just catching bugs and and kind of you know uh, trying to trying to just get through the, the 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 checklist of your testing right so that's kind of where our philosophy also differs on how to truly kind of you know shift the shift testing towards the left and how to enable this much earlier in the life cycle this concept's not new on paper it's been there for a for a long time right it's called d- d- different names like in sprint automation test driven development you know, enabling developers to become kind of testers but the way axel q has approached it is kind of philosophically differently and and as we go through this we can kind of share a little bit more details but that's kind of how we've looked at kind of bringing efficiency to this pipeline now let's talk about your growth what contributed to that growth is it because uh the the trends that you're seeing in the cloud native world a lot of technology that we used to look at they were in in evolution phase kubernetes has kind of become you know the heavyweight when it comes to production it's more or less like linux the way it is secure so what are the what happened in this in this space that contributed to your growth or adoption you know like 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 i was talking about kind of our story and our philosophy so to say right uh, you know uh, you know our, our our goal was to bring if you think about testing there have been two ends of the spectrum right in in test automation specifically right one end of the spectrum has been traditional record and playback kind of tools right which have kind of turned out to be too shallow to really handle that continuous testing and and the dynamic nature of today's apps right and the other end of the spectrum has been you know uh, uh, the, the 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 programming driven hardcore kind of you know uh, uh, open source based approaches of the world right and unfortunately both uh, are not aligned to what uh, what what you know continuous testing and ci cd pipelines need right well, you know the record and playback tools or the vendor driven tools have just been too shallow to kind of cope up with the needs and programming driven on the other hand you know gives the power and flexibility but they come with huge overheads right they comes with they come with overheads of kind of frameworks programming skill set right uh, uh, maintenance nightmares and and so on right so uh, to to be honest our 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 our, our recipe uh, to success was really to bring the best of two worlds together right to kind of uh, have that power and flexibility and and openness of technology consumption from you know from open, from what open source and programming driven gives and and to couple it up with you know leveraging uh, a host of ai based technologies so that you're not only limited to uh, using programming and that skill set and and that overhead right bringing uh, you know the codeless aspect and the codeless philosophy to more real world automation and and that's kind of been the the core of it right along with obviously the uh, the efficiencies that the, the platform brings uh, to the table right which resonated with what our customers were looking at can you please explain a bit about uh, what wh- wh- what does it mean by codeless test automation uh, and what is its role uh, for 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 businesses in, in you know in the pipeline for businesses interestingly the codeless uh, has been uh, has been around for a little bit but it's always been uh, misinterpreted in terms of what that codeless really means right so you know if you look at you know some of the old school tools which claimed to be uh, you know scriptless which was the word back in the days right uh, in 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 automation you know unfortunately the way they worked was from the outside you know they seemed to be more scriptless or codeless right but whenever a complexity hit you know which is the reality of applications and our business rules and what we are validating you would have to go out and write frameworks and scripts and and custom code and all of that and it kind of defeated the purpose of going for a for a no code automation tool right so our codeless philosophy uh was was kind of you know complete fresh perspective into what that means uh like i said we tried to bring the best of two worlds together so our codeless is is truly codeless in a sense that our end user who's a test automation engineer does not need to know any level of programming or syntactical language no matter how complex the automation gets right but we've uh to to cope up with the the flexibility and to cope up with the 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 depth automation requires uh, our platform comes with a natural language interface which means you know uh, even a manual tester would be able to really do more real world and deep automation including complex rule validations across technology stacks and what have you 
leveraging that natural language interface, right? So, uh, you know, that's kind of uh, what has enabled us to bring kind of the best of the two worlds together, right? And and obviously, there is a lot more to the codeless philosophy that goes into Axel Q's platform. We can kind of talk about that, uh, uh, you know, as we go, but that's kind of the crux of, of what, what the codeless philosophy from Axel Q's standpoint means. What is the difference between codeless versus low code? So low code is basically just saying that yeah you can start out codeless but you know you you would you would have to write code when you hit a complexity or or you would write some frameworks to get some modularity and reusability so in in programming world if you think about it right uh, you, you know there is a host of uh, you know framework that you need to leverage to make your program your code smarter, right? It's not just about writing code, but how you write it architecturally sound. How can you reuse it? How can you modularize it? How can you manage changes to it? It's really the magic is in that, right? And the same translates into code-based automation and testing. So what we've done is taken those core concepts and applied it to a no-code automation. So when, 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 when tools and platforms talk about low-code, they're basically talking about writing code to en- to enable all of those aspects, but we've made that as as an out of the box aspect and an aspect of using the platform, and that's where the efficiencies lie. Guljeet, uh, thanks for sharing uh, not only your insights about the the way uh, testing is changing as the landscape is changing. Uh, thanks or no thanks to this crisis that we're going through because these changes will become permanent. All the things that we are experimenting, playing with, they will change the way we, we manage our infrastructure. Uh, and thanks for also explaining a bit more about XLQ. Uh, as I said, you know, I would love to have you again on the show to, to understand more about what you guys are doing there. Uh, once again, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. We'll talk to you soon.